Artisans in China have been throwing pottery for thousands of years. But by the first century AD, they had created something completely new, called porcelain. To make it, Chinese potters mix pure kaolin clay with porcelain stone. But the crucial ingredient was heat. It takes temperatures of about 2400 degrees Fahrenheit to fuse clay into these delicate, glass-like pieces born of earth, water and fire. The West wouldn't create porcelain for another 1700 years. One of the reasons why the rest of the world had to come here to get its porcelain was that nowhere else did they have a furnace capable of generating the high temperatures you need to make true porcelain. The Chinese mastered intense heat when they learned how to turn common iron ore into cast iron and, ultimately, into steel. The secret to achieving extreme temperatures for their famous porcelain was known to the Chinese for centuries. They created furnaces using refractory or heat-resistant clay tiles, which could withstand enough heat to transform iron ore. Able to pour this molten iron into molds, the ancient Chinese discovered the world's first cast iron and quickly put it to work in their fields. With wrought iron, you have to hammer out each item, one at a time. But with cast iron, you can easily replicate products like this plough from a mould, again and again. This design represented a huge increase in efficiency on anything that had gone before. For one, it could be produced relatively quickly and economically. But the real advantage was here, in the field. With a plough like this, he could pull the plough along with a fraction of the effort needed to pull a conventional plough. The part of the plough that does the work is known as the share, the point here. And with a plough such as this, you drastically reduce the effort you need to cut the soil. At the same time as the plough share cuts the earth, the mould board turns the soil in the air. Now, if that seems obvious, that's because every great idea seems obvious in retrospect, but it wasn't obvious to anyone outside China. Cast iron allowed the Chinese to mass-produce farm equipment like this, quickly and easily, but it was far from perfect. The high content of carbon in cast iron makes the metal fairly brittle, so the ancient Chinese created a metal with more resilience. Steel. This is a 21st century blast furnace. It's called a blast furnace because there's a machine, like a giant hot air dryer, that blows air in from the top. The more oxygen in the furnace, the higher the temperature, the less carbon in the mix, the different properties of steel at the end. The basic principles, this wonderful alchemy of carbon, iron and oxygen, were known to the Chinese over 2,000 years ago. Around the second century BC, the Chinese realized you could produce steel cheaply by blowing air into molten cast iron. To generate a regulated and constant stream of air, they invented the double action piston bellows. Here's how it worked. It's equipped with dual intake valves. As you push a piston in, compressed air on one side of the bellows closes the chamber's valve and forces the air out through the bottom. Meanwhile, the other valve opens as pulling sucks air into its chamber. Pushing and pulling creates a continuous flow of air, the genesis of the blast furnace. Eventually, it was this technique that made it possible to mass-produce inexpensive steel. Steel is the backbone of modernity. Without steel, there's no airplanes, no automobiles, no railroads. The invention, the discovery of mass-produced steel was nothing less than a revolution.